Okay, so for the next three weeks, the nuggets are going to be me providing you with three tests that you can take on yourself so you can better project how healthy you are um, in terms of how long we're going to live and how well we're going to live. So for the first uh, nugget or the first test for this week, and like I said, we'll go um, for three more weeks, so there'll be three different separate tests each week. Um, this week, we're gonna talk about grip strength. So there is obviously a lot of correlation to do with health um, and your strength. So um, it may, may not be a direct cause and correlation to if you're not strong, you're going to be unhealthy, but normally unhealthy people have um, a very weak body. So one way we can do a fit physical test is to test our grip strength. So if our grip is strong, we know that the rest of our body through proper strength training, because as we do consistent strength training, even when we're doing lower body, there's a form of grip strength that's involved. But if your entire body is strong, then the, the result will be a stronger grip. So yes, we do want to strengthen it specifically. That's why I always encourage a lot of farmer's walks, um, a lot of, um, full range of motion movements, right? So you wanna include the weak link, which is this part of your arm through each movement. So, you know, making sure that you're doing full ranges of motion, so the weak link and the wrist and your grip is incorporated, but just overall body strength will give you a good indication and predictor on how your grip strength is. So there are three different ways that you can test your grip strength. So I wanna give you three options. Um, and then the last option is probably going to be the one for most of us. So the first gold standard test, we use a little grip machine called a grip dynamometer. And um, if you have access to one of these, go for it. Your doctor may test this in your physical, um, but I would really like for you to do these tests right away so we can then test ourselves again at the end of this session. So it kind of is a one great way of keeping us motivated. If we know we're doing these little tests at the beginning of the session and then do them at the end um, or in the next, you know, after six months, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to improve some of these numbers, um, you know that you're improving. So it's a really good way to keep consistent in the back of your mind if you know you're going to be testing some of these physical uh, abilities for your body to, to, to be able to do to know and predict longevity and vitality. So grip strength, the, the grip um, little machine, no one has access to that, they're very expensive. So if you, ha it's a gold standard, but if you have access to it and you can get one done right away, please do that. The second test, which is also a very good predictor of grip strength, is the dead hang, which will improve through pull-ups. When I program, just a simple dead hang, increasing bicep curls, um, in your movements, etc. You don't have to worry about any of this because it's already programmed in your program. Um, but I just want you to know that the dead hang is an excellent way to predict grip strength. The problem is, is that once we get to a certain age, and I was just talking to Neil about this because he thinks it's me, me using an excuse, so we can kind of get on the Facebook page and talk a little bit more about sort of this contentious topic between Neil and I is um, he believes that most everyone, including 50 plus women, should be able to do a dead hang for at least one minute. I don't agree with that. I know that I can dead hang for one minute and I'm 49 years old. It's a challenge for sure, but I also know that a lot of us are starting from a little bit lower level. Some of us have just started incorporating strength and uh, encouraging and incorporating this type of training into our routine. So a dead hang for someone like that is going to, you're gonna feel very discouraged. So I also want you to know that you don't have to do the dead hang as a prerequisite to indicate your grip strength. But if you are interested in trying and you have access to some place that you can hang yourself, it doesn't have to be this fancy squat rack, it can be anywhere. Um, and just make sure you're engaging your body, right? You don't wanna be locking everything out for safety and count how long you can do that. That is also going to give you a good indicator. 
Um, we can talk more about how long we're able to hold it on the Facebook page and we can talk about goals, etc. The second, or sorry, the third option, which is going to be probably um, the one most of us will do, is just you have to grab a weight uh, that's about 10% of your body. So I don't know exactly how much I weigh just because that is not something that I worry about, but I'm going to guesstimate that I'm about 130 pounds. So I have, so 10% of my weight is approximately 15 pounds on the higher end, I believe. Um, so what we want to do, and you're going to do this standing, and I'll dump all of this so you can see it. You're going to grab 10% of your total body weight. So just to clarify, I believe I'm about 130 pounds. So I have 15 pounds in my hand. We're going to just stand and hold the weight with your hands down, palms down. Elbow has to stay nice and tucked in. Don't have it out here. Nice and tight. And I just want you to try to hold the dumbbell for 30 seconds. I, you'll be surprised at how hard this is. Um, I did try it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Just so you can see palms down, elbows in. And a good indicator that your grip strength is where it needs to be is if you can do that for 30 seconds. So give it a try. Please write down underneath this nugget what you decided to do in terms of this type of test and what your outcome was. So when we refer back to these tests later on, we can see that we've, it, we have indeed improved in our strength.